All right, we're gonna go over my ebook today. It is free. I will put the link in the description. And the reason that I wanna do this is because people don't realize that hormones are king and it actually doesn't take that much to put you in a better situation by doing little things consistently. So I wanna run through all that because there's a ton of people out there that are working really hard and they are not achieving the goals that they want. Maybe you're low on energy. Maybe you don't have the body composition you desire. Maybe you have an autoimmune illness. Maybe your sleep is poor. Maybe you feel like you're always overwhelmed. This helps you with all of that and more, and it's really not that complex. So well, today, we're gonna break down some of the big needle movers. So page one is just context, a little bit of a shameless plug, right? People wanna know, how do I know what I know? What's my experience? That's what this is about. Um, for those of you who don't know, I worked under Paul Saladino at a company called Heart and Soil as the lead health coach for a number of years, and I saw a ton of anecdotes. Uh, this is probably going closer to 14,000 now, but I basically conducted diet, lifestyle, supplementation, workout experiments for six to 12 months, and between whoop and chronometer and blood work and body composition and habit tracking, I compared all these things and I was like, how do I feel best? Where is Where am I getting the most bang for my buck in terms of the time and the money and the effort I invest and how does that give me benefits? And so this is a book of basically all that I learned through that and helping you build out your own life so that way you are getting the most of the time, the energy, the money, that you put into all of this. Looking to get the lowest hanging fruit, that actually gets us the majority of the results. So that's the theme for the whole book. First off, when it comes to hormones, morning routine is king. Now, you've probably heard, if you're into this stuff from Hube Daddy, or Huberman as I like to call him, and a lot of other sources, that uh, you don't want anything to spike your cortisol artificially first thing in the morning. And people also underestimate getting outside and walking. So obviously sunlight is a huge part of that because it signals uh, your cortisol to spike and the inverse relation to that is melatonin at night. So actually by getting up and getting outside in the morning, you are setting yourself up to have high melatonin at night. You don't need to supplement with melatonin if you have a good routine. And from a hormone standpoint, you want this circadian rhythm to be dialed in. If we boil this whole page down, you really don't have to do a whole lot. Just get in the routine to take a walk. Now, if you can go for a long walk, that's great. But as much as five minutes in the sunlight or looking, not necessarily looking straight at the sun. I don't want you to blind yourself. I don't want to be liable for that. But just being outside and having the sunlight in your eyes, on your skin, will signal enough of the benefits for even just five minutes. I have some clients where they you know, go straight into work and they're stressed and all these things. And they're like, sorry, sorry Bates, I don't have enough time to take a walk. Well, they have a balcony in their apartment complex. They go outside, sit in the balcony for five minutes, and that will help their circadian rhythm, that will help their sleep, and that will help them feel more alert and awake. And try not to overstimulate stimulate yourself when you first wake up, ease into being awake and your cortisol will spike naturally. Reverse engineer when you wanna get up, so that way you're in full swing by the time your cortisol is spiking naturally. Page two, we have sleep hygiene. As I mentioned, getting up early and getting sunlight is a prerequisite for this because once your cortisol spikes, you start to make melatonin around you know, 16 hours later. So make sure that you are getting consistent bed and wake times. Now, obviously life is all about exceptions. You know, 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time be dialed, 20% make exceptions. So that way your lifestyle is sustainable. And the way that we do this is by having maybe plus or minus 60 minutes for your better wait time. That's gonna get you the most bang for your buck if you do any one thing for sleep hygiene. Because your hormones get in this circadian rhythm and it'll be so much easier to go to sleep. It'll be easier to get REM and deep sleep, which are the restorative stages of sleep. And we absolutely need this to produce slash support and optimize and utilize hormones. The bonus ones that are really helpful are sleep in a cool room, make sure that it's dark in there. And I also, I like to leave the bed for sleeping and maybe other activities, one of the few cardio activities I recommend for most people. Uh, outside of that, leave it for sleeping. Don't eat in there, don't.
look at your phone in bed, don't watch movies in bed. Making sure your body has a psychological association with what the bed is for actually has been shown to increase sleep consistency and quality. Next page. It may seem a little silly to talk about balance because everyone believes that you have to work hard in order to achieve what you want. But I think what we underestimate is how counterproductive stress can be. And it's really free. It's free for the taking to optimize your hormones and, and therefore unlock everything else you desire. We just don't take the time to do it. And I don't blame anyone. It's This is the curse of modernity. There's always more to do. We're always plugged in. You're always comparing and contrasting to other people. And if you're an ambitious, goal-oriented, kind person, there's just so much to deal with day in and day out. So what do we do about that? My number one takeaway for work-life balance and managing stress is to work efficiently, but create a clear distinction from the time you allocate to work and then the time that you allocate for play. And I think you should be playing every day or every day that you can, right? So get in the mode, toggle. Toggling is my favorite tool. Toggle into work mode, get shit done, be dialed in, put your phone on airplane mode, don't have any distractions, have a plan for the day, but then toggle into some other time where you, maybe it's unstructured or maybe you're being unproductive. And these things aren't counterproductive. In fact, they add to your productivity because if it doesn't have to do with what you're working on, it is amazing how your central nervous system and your psychology decompress and how much that benefits your hormone production, your hormone optimization. So find a way to toggle. It looks different for everybody. But if you have to book it, which I do, put it on your calendar. Say, this is unstructured time or this is time I'm taking into myself to be unproductive. This is when I'm going to go out with my friends and just not think about all of these structured things. And don't have shame around being unproductive. That's the other thing I see. People try to do this and they shame themselves and they just say, oh, if I'm not working, if I'm not being productive, if I'm not working out, if I'm not weighing my food, I'm failing. And that actually affects their health negatively more than if they actually spent that time disconnecting. This is gonna be difficult for me to keep concise because out of all of my experiments, this is the one that I have gone down the most rabbit holes on. And now that I'm pulling back, I really think there's a few takeaways that everyone can benefit from. Don't demonize any secret single macronutrient. We need all of them. Don't overconsume protein. It's good for you, but there are stressful components to it. For example, if you overconsume protein, you will have a lot of urea. Urea uh, is something that's stressful for the body to break down and expunge. You don't need to go beyond one gram of, pro of protein per pound of body weight. In fact, I don't think most people should be doing that. I've seen 0.8 grams per pound of body weight be very useful, especially if you are trying to put on muscle or recomp, which is putting on muscle while losing fat. So don't overdo protein. You need fuel to feel good and to recover. And fuel comes in, in both carbohydrates and fats. But look, if you are eating whole foods, you are f nourishing and fueling your body proportionate to your activity. That's the number one takeaway on this, right? Don't eat processed foods. Don't stay in a caloric deficit perpetually because your body's peripheral systems or functions will shut down over time. It, it signals scarcity, which will cause your body to go into triage mode. And you don't want to do that because hormones are the first things that suffer when you do that. So you want to signal abundance in terms of calories, but also nutrients without being in too excessive of a surplus. So what I like to do is be in a slight surplus and then have some variance in my activity. So some days I'll be at maintenance or maybe I'll burn more than I eat. And then other days I'll be in a slight surplus because this is signaling abundance regardless of my level of activity. And this seems to work really well for my clients. There are so many different theories about when is the most optimal time to work out and what structure is best and yada, yada, yada. Look, I got my opinions, everybody else has them. If we boil this down, you need to do something that you enjoy that you'll be consistent with. That's it. I know consistency is key, is so cliche, we hear it all the time, but when it comes to human physiology, it couldn't be more true. We need a consistent stimulus. 
the actually the intensity of the stimulus is much less important than the frequency that we receive the stimulus and overtraining is a real thing and many people are actually suffering from it and they don't know it i have been there twice i have tons of clients who are there so if you feel like you are doing so much and you're actually getting worse if you're putting on unwanted weight or you're feeling so run down and you're, you're losing strength despite all of your training it could actually benefit you to dial back a little bit overtraining often leads to under eating being overstressed both mentally and physically and under sleeping and it's not intentional it's actually those are byproducts of overtraining and this is something i work with a ton of people on so if you feel like you're doing everything and you're overtraining but you're not sure reach out to me i'd love to chat about that vitamin d it is not a vitamin it functions like a hormone which is why it's in the hormone ebook you absolutely will feel like a new person if you are getting vitamin d and you weren't before and yes you can supplement orally there's some nuance here oral supplement of vitamin D3 has been proven not to be the same as vitamin D synthesized by your skin. However, depending on your latitude, you may not be able to synthesize vitamin D certain parts of the year or maybe the majority of the year, depending on how extreme your latitude is. So therefore, get as much time in the sun, the sun as possible, but also use this app because it will tell you the UV and it will let you know how much vitamin D you are synthesizing. Don't think that D3 is something you have to take. If you can get enough vitamin D through sun exposure, that has been proven to be wildly better than D3, but certainly D oral D3 supplementation is better than no D3 at all, right? So there's a, there's a little bit of a gradient or a pyramid there. I actually, despite the small amounts of radiation that come from tanning beds, I have seen that for myself and for many people and in studies, be more efficient and effective at helping people raise vitamin D levels than supplementing D3. The other nuance here is that supplementing oral D3 can increase your blood serum of vitamin D, but it doesn't function the same in terms of benefits in your body. There was a study with people that had multiple sclerosis and they had, uh, which is a neuromuscular autoimmune disorder, uh, or autoimmune illness, excuse me, and they, had two groups. Group A got vitamin D from the sun in the same amount that group B got oral D3 supplementation. And they found that the group that got vitamin D from the sun, it helped reduce their symptoms and, and put some in remission entirely, much more than the group that got oral D3 where they saw very little change. So that's just a quick example. I probably went down the rabbit hole too deep on that, but I think that this is a severely underappreciated uh, aspect of hormone balance plus vitamin D ties into a lot of the other important hormones, um, namely for men and women, the hormones that are going to affect our body composition and our energy levels. I know this is just a text wall. It's not very beautiful. Guess what? It's a free ebook. So suck it up. Um, there are a ton of hormone killers out there and you can't possibly know them all or avoid all of them. This is just part of living in the modern world. But here are some of the bigger culprits. You know, I would just say, choose your battles. There's people in this health realm can get really demonizing, right? And they say, oh, this one little thing, you have to avoid it all the time. What they don't realize is that that adds a lot of stress. If imagine being in a, an anxious state where you think everything is out to kill you. In reality, there are some bigger needle movers and then there's some smaller needle, needle movers. So you have to realize that not all battles are worth fighting, but the big ones are. So I believe that these are some of the bigger ones. I don't expect everybody to avoid all these things all the time. I certainly don't, but I don't take melatonin. I don't have fluoride in my water. I can't avoid plastics completely sometimes, and I'm okay with that. I have natural hygiene products. I My air quality is not perfect, but I have a filter I use that I trust. Um, for women, contraceptives of any form almost always have a downside. When I can afford it, if you can afford it, getting organic produce is, is 
and, and high quality animal foods is great. And then limit your al alcohol consumption. You don't have to go without it completely, but just limit it. And just doing those things, you will feel a world of a difference and your hormones will thank you. This is my way of saying thank you for, for reading the ebook and following along. There's a ton of resources that I'm working on here at the bottom. And um, I do believe that you can't really know where your hormones are at unless you get a baseline. So I partnered with Merrick Health, you may have heard of them. I absolutely love them. The list of labs that you might get from your primary care physician, it's not comprehensive enough. And then when you, when you request things like fasting insulin, which everybody should know, they give you pushback or your insurance doesn't cover it and you pay a ton out of pocket. So what I've been really excited about and what I've done with tons and tons of people since I've left Heart and Soil is giving them a massive discount for a comprehensive lab so we can get a baseline. If you haven't start, done all these things or you're not doing all these things, get a baseline and then retest three to four months later after you've been diligent and you can see the difference. And that's absolutely what I love doing with people. If you don't have a functional medicine doctor or a primary care physician that will order you a comprehensive lab, which if you wanna know what that looks like, let me know and I'll send you a list of everything that Merrick gets and everything that I would suggest getting. If they're not able to get it for less than this, absolutely do this, it is so worth it. You get not only a, a session with them where I can sit on the call with you, but I will also do a separate call with you where we can go over what you wanna do based on your goals, based off your results. Thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful. Start implementing these things right away. If you have feedback, let me know. If you think I missed anything on these, uh, these different sectors, let me know. So again, the resources at the bottom, I'm so pumped to be working on these things. Dishwasher agrees. And I hope to provide more resources soon that you find helpful. See you next time.